Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, tell the audience what we're going to be talking about today? This one's going to be a lot of you talking, so I apologize to the listeners in advance. Um, we did um, a webinar about this, and uh, we've, we've had various times over the course of interviewing so many people on this podcast that. Very often, they get their sales leader hire wrong. So often. It's it's almost bizarre to me. I, it, you never hear the marketer hire goes wrong, eh, Sean? But uh, it's interesting. And um, it's it seems to be nearly every guest who says their first sales leader or not necessarily the first one, but they've struggled to get that right. So I was interested in what are good and what are bad sales managers or leaders like. So I thought I'd open up the floor to you. We talked about it on the family feed yep. that we did. And of course, link below, obviously. But um, What's bad look like? What's in the middle and what's good? So I'd probably separate into like three different sections if I had to say like how I typically do one-on-ones um, or, the, you know, the phrases I use. I would say one would be, you know, follow-ups. Number two would probably be, you know, what's in your pipeline. And then I'd probably go over Salesforce and close reviews. So let's start with follow-ups, for example. Um, you know, one of, one of the things I would ask, you know, lead after lead is, What's the progress with this deal? So say you have 10 things, you know, we have eight days, nine death delays in the month. You have 10 deals. What are our progress? And then I'd probably look at the notes. So what is the progress with these? And then if they say, well, we're here, we're negotiating, you were, you know, we're doing this. The second question that I typically ask is, is there anything I can do to remove those obstacles? Um, so those would be with the follow-ups. Um, anything that you see, like different or you've heard differently for like the follow-up process and when you're going over follow-ups in Salesforce? So just to clarify, is that what you're saying good good people do, right? Yeah, I mean, that's I, I think that's good people do. I think what bad people do is they don't ask enough questions. So they'll ask um, with a follow-up, they'll be like, did you follow up? Yes, no. Okay, did you follow up with this one? Yes, no. Instead of saying, where are we? Where what, what stage are we at? And then week over week, you've got to continue to say, okay, last week we were here. Now where are we? So you want to obviously make sure that every deal in your pipe is always moving forward. If you keep saying, where are we? You know, did you follow up? It's just a binary yes or no answer. Yeah. And the follow up may lead to absolutely nothing every week, every time you ask. So yeah. Um, Better ones that I've seen ask that type of where are we, what can I do to help type thing. Um, they also know the limit where some reps, different styles, um, sometimes it's not necessary. Sometimes you're overly keen to help. Um, not every time does the rep need or want the manager to come in and help close the deal. Not every time. Oftentimes that helps, but awareness of that line, I think. For instance, if our team had you come on every call and try and close it with them, I think they'd kind of feel defeated and a little bit useless. So you would ever do that, but um, there's a line for that. But you know, like you want to jump in there, go on. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think there is, there is a time and place for that, though. Um, I actually like to get involved. So if, for example, we're in the ninth inning, we're, in the, we're, we're almost finished that deal. Deal's very close. They're like, yeah, we're going to sign that sales agreement. Sales reps calls, no answer. Calls again, no answer. Can't get a hold of them. You know, or you've given some sort of small discount saying, okay, you know, if you sign by June 30th, you get 5%. You know, then what I like to do is I don't like to get involved, but I like to be CC'd on the email. So it shows that A, I'm going above and beyond to get you that 5% discount. B, there is a time crunch for you to be able to take advantage of that discount. But C, you know, we want you as a client. So I do like to not get involved, but I like to be CC'd on emails, usually when we're close. To the finish line. Now, the only other thing is if we are, you know, negotiating or competing against another client or sorry, another one of our competitors, I like to also that but get involved because then it's like, oh, you know what? This company, if they're going to have their manager involved in the sales process, if I sign up, it's very likely their support is going to be much like their manager style, very involved. And the one thing I think that, you know, in every basically tech space right now is everything's saturated and, and, and there are a lot of products that do the exact same thing. So you want to find that person that's going to give you that personal touch, that support, et cetera. So going on to the second one, 
Um, and this is when every sales manager goes through is, you know, forecast quotas, pipelines. Um, so questions like good questions I like to ask are, are we progressing? Is the pipeline building? What is your goal in the pipeline? Um, do you have any new opportunities this week? So if I'm going week after week, I will look at what was in the pipeline and then what's new in the pipeline. And one other thing that I, it's just a pet peeve. Um, and it's one thing that I hate and uh, I'm not going to mention names, but people still do it even on my team now is there should never, there's never everybody listening. Actually, if you're in sales, when you go into a manager meeting with a one-on-one, -on -one, you should never have a notes in Salesforce or whatever your CRM is a note that is in the past. Meaning if today is, for example, July 1st, okay. Or August 1st, let's use August 1st. Today's August 1st. You should not have a note saying June or July in there. That means you haven't followed up or done anything in the last two months with that, with that deal. So I always like to say, even if you called no answer, have something in there from the present day to the future. If you have something in the past to me, you haven't done the activity, you haven't been following your pipeline. So the last thing I would say for, um, you know, the pipeline is, have you seen any new objections, um, any stall deals? Are any deals going sideways? Are we losing any deals? Those are the good questions. The bad questions about pipeline is, you know, you know, really saying, why is just, why isn't your pipeline big enough? Because you're not really giving them any answer. You're just saying, you know, why haven't you done this? Anything, why haven't you is not going to, A, is it going to make a, a salesperson get defensive? So you're not going to get to the bottom of what can you actually do to actually improve it. So I find you have to talk in the pipeline in more positive manner than that negative manner, because the negative manner will just defeat the purpose of those calls. So with the um, with the positive side of that, the, the negative, there's all kinds of different angles for that. But with the positive, there's a bit of a line where you've um, you have to be able to hear the truthful, real answer about it. And the rep's got to know what that is, too. It's one thing to say the deal is slipping away. It's another thing to know that it's slipping away from experience. But sometimes a lot of, I think a lot of reps are, um, they don't want to say that because it makes the pipeline look weaker. And then that's another question. And that's another negative question. So you've got to be able to deal with that and not like come down like a ton of bricks. Kind of like you said, um, the why is there not more? Well, duh. Like if I had 20 hours in a day, I would do more, wouldn't I? It's, you know, you can only do as good and as best as you can and as much of it. So there's that. I think um, the when is this going to close is a little bit could be both because you want to keep it keep someone honest and you want to keep them gunning for the best that they can get. But I'm sure you've run into plenty of times where you push that push that and it's kind of gone both ways to be honest, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the one other thing, I mean, another thing that I, I every sales rep does and they think that managers don't realize is I always like to ask. It's a good question to ask is. Okay, you haven't been able to get in touch in a month. When is this going to be a closed loss? Because one thing sales reps don't like to do is actually clean up their CRM and put it as closed loss. Because they want the manager to see, oh, I've got this huge pipeline. I have this, you know, our but at the end of the day, that's actually going to hurt you. Because what I look at as a manager is what is the close rate of those opportunities? So if you have a hundred thousand dollars in your pipeline and you're closing ten thousand and it's ten percent, but you know deep down that thirty thousand that is not going to close anyway. Your conversion rate might be 10%, where realistically it might be 25, 30%. So even though you're closing, I would say I'm, I'd rather hire someone with a 30% close rate than someone with 10% close rate because you're not cleaning your serum. So that's a good question to ask is when are you going to close as a sales loss? And then another question is what are you going to do when it's close lost? Like are you just going to throw it to the side and not follow up or are you going to put it through some sort of uh, nurture campaign for a year and a half after? Um, after that closed loss. So there's different ways to do it, but um, sales reps do think they can fool their bosses. But at the end of the day, you know, as I, I had a call yesterday with marketing, uh, our marketing team here, and I was like, numbers don't lie. Data does not lie. So if you see those percentages at 10% when they should be 30, the numbers don't lie. But also, I think um, if you're going to do that, you do need, um, you need to be able to be, how to say this properly. Um, if I had a manager who was total crap and useless, and whatever they tell me isn't going to help, then I'm I'm less inclined. Look, I was about to say I'm not going to, but that's that's not the right behavior to have. 
I'm less inclined to be rigid about cleaning up the CRM so that the stats are 100% accurate because what you will do with it doesn't really help. But if you're really good and you're a good coach, yeah, I will. Because I know that you're going to say, actually, you, you know what? Your close rate is like one in seven. All right. Could do better. Um, yep. But let's look at the three that you discounted. Could we have not put them close loss? Could we have like resuscitated them? Maybe, probably not. But then the ones that we lost, why did we? And what happened with them? And we'll go through them. That's like a whole new thing as well. That's another dynamic where I would trust you to look through my deals and say, like, what did I do wrong? And we can improve that for next quarter. But other managers don't know how to uh, deal with that. So that that's a good and a bad there. So yeah. what else was it? We had follow-up, pipeline, and... So I would say closed deals. So, okay. you know, what I would ask for those is, you know, since our last call, and, and, and as managers, you typically have one-on-ones every week, what has closed since our last review? Because um, then you hold them accountable saying, okay, over the last week, I closed A, B, e, and C. Another good question to ask is, you know, what did you learn about that close one deal? You know, did we beat our competition? Why did we beat our competition? What was it? What was the deciding factor why they took our vanilla soft over X, Y, and Z? Um, and then the third good one, a good, good phrase I always I like to ask is um, to dive deeper into the a closed loss deal. Why did we, you know, a lot of people just say, oh, we lost that deal because of price. Well, what price were they looking for? Why were they looking for that price? Do they know the value they could have got for an extra price? So finding out exactly why you won your closed one, why you lost your closed loss are very important. And <clears throat> one thing we've implemented is now always knowing if we lose to a competitor, what did our competitor have? Maybe it's something we should be building and putting in our roadmap. So always asking questions and always doing a follow-up call. Some of our, 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 our larger deals that we've lost actually in 2023 – We've actually had follow-up calls just to discuss why we lost. And that helps you for the future and obviously for your for, for the long-term roadmap. Now, under closed deals, some bad phrases. I mean, you know, just not – just just it's asking, did we lose it, yes or no? I think anything that's binary that doesn't give you any answers or any value is, is, is not a good um, way to manage it. You've always got to be asking questions because if you're too easy on your sales rep, they will take advantage of you, right? So I think that's very important. So with the with these open questions, that's sort of a theme that you've mentioned throughout. Um, there's a degree of where the feedback can be very subjective. It can be the customer just being, frankly, a bit blindsided to something and they think that it should be cheaper than it should be. Yeah, That's feedback you can't take to heart. There's going to be ranges where the rep doesn't want to hear it and see it how they're saying it there's a like there's two ends of the chasm there that's that's on you to sort of work out where in the in the world they actually are what's like actually true you're getting a lot of feedback because you're kind of the the furthest out facing customer facing people you're going to hear a lot more feedback than anybody else certainly the customer team because they're only seeing the end eventual customers yeah how do you because you could spend a lot of time doing this you could say what new objections do you hear and you could end up with a list as long as you're armed just for example, then you got to work out how to coach on that. You could get a list of 50 feature requests and then that involves other teams. How, how can you deal with all of these emerging different things all the time so it doesn't drive you insane? I don't know. It's a tough, I, I mean, I'd love to hear your opinion. I mean, what, like, what do you think? I mean, you've, you've, you've worked with our sales team and worked with sales team. What do you think? Um, what I like about our sales team is there's, there is a good feedback loop, but it's sort of trending stuff, not just everything. Because that, that's when it becomes distracting and a bit annoying. You know, I don't need to know every time that a competitor is mentioned because they probably should be. So it doesn't mean that that company's growing or is bigger or something like that. Or if every every single prospect wants a certain feature and we don't have it, that's interesting. If three a week or three a month have it, you know, not every company has everything, and nor should we. So there's there's yeah. like a level of what's trending. I think is the the answer for that. Um, and then probably. You might you might hear this in customer calls, but maybe you're targeting the wrong people as well. Maybe, hopefully not, but or maybe my team is. So then there's sort of like a, you have to tell us, and we have to tell you. And if it matches, it's probably right. If it doesn't, it might not be. Yeah, I mean, with me, the th things I like to know is new feature releases by competitors and pricing. Because if they make a pricing adjustment, you know, 
you know, you can either follow or you can, you can know you're cheaper. So I like to know features and pricing, especially on competitors. Cause if you lose on price, then like, what, what is, what is the, what is the value or what are you, we offering that is making our price more than our competitors and not competitive with our competitors. So I think that's where you got to really dig in deeper for, but overall, I mean, knowing a lot about your competitors, but you know, knowing if my competitor raises a series A or series B, we always talk about like, I don't really care because yeah. I've been, you know, I've been up against the unicorns before and you can be a startup and still grab business from a unicorn. It doesn't really matter. So. Yeah, I think that it's actually the intangibles which are almost more useful. Like you wouldn't know unless you'd onboarded with a competitor what their support is like. How yeah. how could you? So if you hear like, yeah, we're leaving this company, like they they onboard us, they never helped us ever again, they don't reply. Not that that's particularly useful in your messaging when you're reaching out to someone, but you can really sell that in the closing as like, so we'll do a three week onboarding. We have unlimited access to our support reps. And that's immediately something you can use. So it's those little things. I guess you have to pre-plan what you're going to ask a little bit, but yep. those things, more, as well as the price, you can find that out, but not oftentimes are you going to find it out first. Exactly. Well, those are the uh, the good, the bad of sales manager phrases. Um, and we've done a few of these episodes lately uh, talking about cold calling and cold emailing. So um, I do want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, this episode is been great because it's something i'm very passionate about and thank you for everybody listening if you enjoyed the show don't forget to give ollie and i a five-star review wherever you're listening from so you don't miss the next show thank you very much guys and see you soon